What's up, everybody? How are we? Um, when I think about this show, I think about you guys. Um, in uh, the words of Brad Blackwell, who did the intro there, as you're seeing or or just heard. How is everybody? How are we? Are we uh, anybody in the building? Um, we'll let a few people come in. Hope everybody is well. Welcome to the Performance Medicine Show. We do this every single uh, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. D. Lynn, what's going on? Hello on YouTube. I'm going to make sure we're live everywhere. Jack, what's going on, ma'am? Great to see you. All right. I think, I think we are live. I think we are live. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you guys for excusing my hair. Um, hope everybody is well. We're waiting for Dr. Rogers. This is where we answer y'all's health and wellness questions. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, thank y'all for hanging out with us this evening. Uh, Carol, what's going on? Great to see you. Bianca, hello. Great to see you. Um, super excited for tonight's show. We've got some great questions that came in throughout the week. Um, and I know you guys are going to be asking some amazing live questions. Katie, what's going on? I hope your day was phenomenal. Uh, I can't wait to, to see you guys here in the next day or so. I'm going to head up to, to the Tri-Cities. Alice, what's going on? Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Thank you guys for being with us live this evening. Um, we had a big day today. Uh, as you guys know, we send out Performance Weekly, our weekly newsletter, every single Tuesday around 1 o'clock, 1.30 or so. And uh, basically what Performance Weekly is, is it's a curation of all of our content that goes out uh, during the week, all the long form stuff. And this week's Common Sense episode was with our good friend and physical therapist of, of over 36 years, uh, Ernie Dixon. Uh, if you've been to our Kingsport office, you've most certainly seen Ernie. Um, he and Dr. Rogers talk about stretching, uh, and the controversy around it. Um, I know there's, there's lots of, uh, these places called stretch labs, uh, that have been opening up and, uh, there is some controversy around, uh, stretching. Um, it can be, uh, not a great thing if you don't, if you don't do it right, but it also can be a great thing. Um, so check out that episode to learn how to take advantage of places like stretch labs, um, and learn how to do it the right way. And uh, we had a brand new episode of Explain This with Robin Riddle, our nurse practitioner in the Knoxville office. Uh, in this episode, and this is this is such a good episode, guys. Um, I think one of the more common questions I get um, in our social channel life is, which magnesium should I take? And in this episode, Robin Riddle goes over the different types of magnesium and how to decide which one is best for you. So if you're wondering what uh, what magnesium you should be taking, definitely check out that episode. I believe it's not a super long episode, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So uh, check that out after this. Um, what's going on, everybody? Okay, we're seeing, I'm seeing, uh, all right, we got Katie in here. I'm, I'm sure, Carter, I'm sure you're somewhere. Hello, hello, great to see you. Um, is Doc ready to roll? Oh, they're pinging me. They're pinging me and they're doing it because we've got lips, hips, and sips. As you can see there, we're doing it in our Kingsport office, Johnson City office, and our brand new Fountain City location. Uh, the dates are uh, right there on the screen. Uh, Kingsport is coming up February 2nd, 5 to 7. That's in uh, the Red House um, at 1325 East Center Street. Uh, it's right beside our White House location. Uh, Johnson City is on February 8th. That'll be a Wednesday, 5 to 7 on the uh, at the office off Watauga Avenue. And then, of course, Fountain City on February 9th. Uh, that'll be off Hotel Road right across from Litton's, if you've ever been to Litton's. Um, and if you haven't been to Litton's, you should go to Litton's. Um, you see the specials there. Uh, we will be throwing that up here throughout the show if you guys have any questions about it. Uh, Grandma Mary, what's going on? Tabitha, hello. Great to see you. So good to see you, Tabitha. Uh, if you've been to, to Kingsport, you've definitely seen Tabitha. Thank you for hanging out. Steve, what's going on, my brother? 
Great to see you, man. Um, we're going to get Doc here. Ready to roll, answer some questions. All right. You ready to roll? Uh, What's going on, my man? Hey, Ben. You got a haircut. It looks like you got a new hair hairstyle. Um, this is the hairstyle that looks like it's like the hairstyle that comes with a um, a toboggan's been on my head all day. Oh, it looks like a and, surfer dude. It looks like an Australian <laughs> surfer dude. Um, it, you know what? We had a funny conversation <clears throat> in the Fountain City office the other day about uh, what what you call a toboggan. Um, apparently, a toboggan, a toboggan can be a beanie. A toboggan is also, um, I think where Amber's from, toboggans are like a sled. And I yeah. had no idea. Yeah, um, toboggan's definitely a sled, but it also I, means a beanie up north. You know, our Yankee friends call it a beanie, what we call a <laughs> toboggan. Uh, guys, I am turning on the podcaster. Uh, we're recording this live. Um, as you guys know, we post this on our Outside the Box podcast. Uh, welcome in everybody. Welcome in. Um, okay. We're, we got so many questions tonight, pop. So, uh, first of all, real quick, all right. give me a quick update. What did you learn today? How was your day? And then we'll dive into oh, questions. Thank you for asking. Um, it was a great day. A lot of new patients, um, spoke to one from California, had a new family from near the Roanoke, Virginia area, this super, super good family. And uh, yes, a lot. It's a great day. It was really a lot of people, you know, wanting opinions on how to stay healthy. And it's just it's just interesting, fun. Um, it can be taxing at times when you have to put your thinking cap on for different kinds of problems. But um, overall, it was just a great day. It's a fantastic awesome. day. Um, you know what you told me about the beanies and what different people call things remind me of the story where not long ago I have these Ugg boots, you know, that they go pretty high. Everybody knows what Ugg boots are. They look kind of like suede, but they're kind of tall boots. Isn't that what women wear? Yeah. This is where that story's going. But um, so I go into our local sporting goods store because it was cold. It was you know, eight o'clock at night and I needed something from the sporting goods store. So I go there and I just kept my Ugg boots on because it's cold out there. So I walk in there and this must have been a high school student comes to wait on me, ask me if he could help me. And um, he goes, are those Ugg boots you're wearing? And I go, yeah. You know, I was kind of proud of it because I think I was cool. And he goes, I've never seen a man wear those. And I go, you haven't? We Have you heard of Tom Brady and his whole offensive linemen who wear Ugg boots? Uh, did you know they wear them? Tom Brady bought all of his offensive linemen Ugg boots for the winter. He goes, yeah, I know that, but you're not Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so this I kind of slunk out. I kind of slunk out of there. I, I'd say Tom. Tom can definitely pull those off. Yeah, it didn't um, hurt. It didn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, uh, well, Pop, we got some great questions that came in throughout the week. And uh, guys, if you have a question, if you're with us live tonight uh, and have a question for Dr. Rogers, go ahead and put that in the comments. I see Rhonda's question right there on uh, keto. I love it. We're going to get to that here in just a second. Um, but let's 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 start here. Um, you know. I'm going to put this at the beginning of the show because uh, I know it's a, it's a, it's a supplement that you're super big on. And I know a, a lot of the patients in office like are huge fans of saffron. Yeah. So like what, what brand are you using? Uh, there's um, two brands that I use. One is life extension. The other one's our own brand that we get compounded for us at um, the freedom to formulate compound pharmacy in Portland, Oregon. So I put saffron, L-theanine, and ashwagandha in one pill. So it kind of, it helps, it hits it from several di several different angles. Why do you have that right now? You pulled that right up. Yeah, there's the, is that, that right. what, is that what sati Ariel is? Is that saffron? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so those are the, the doses there in the Dr. Rogers stress relief, uh, which has saffron in it. Um, we can we'll I'll like put it. that back up guys, if you want, uh, if you need me to put that back up. So that's my um, favorite, but life extension makes a good one. Um, um, it needs saffron's only real. It's a spice. If it has a little bit of a pinkish color to it. Mm. So if it's entirely white, it's not pure. Um, oh, interesting. From what I've heard. Um, all right, we're going to keep it moving here, guys. Uh, Dr. Rogers has mentioned supplements for brain health. Prevagen is highly advertised, but what is the best one? Also, can these be taken by both young and old adults? Uh, Prevagen, I'm assuming, um, is uh, being advertised on TV, which I, I know how you feel about that. Um, what's your What's your thoughts on this? You know what I always say is if that if a food or a medicine is advertised on TV, don't take it. <laughs> That's an oversimplification, but um, I just don't like advertising drugs on TV. Um, but, um, you know, Prevagen is not bad. It's not as potent as something like Cognitex, which Life Extension makes. Uh, so that's my favorite is Cognitex. I love it because it has phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine. There's another one that I'll add sometimes uh, that has bacopa in it, or just pl take plain bacopa, which is great. Um, but I'd say Cognitex is my favorite. That's the one I take. Uh, it's just, it just beats uh, Prevagen hands down. Kind of like a, a Dr. Rogers multivitamin or a life extension, even a life extension multivitamin, which is not as good as mine. Um, will beat a centrum any day of the week as far as the, the amount of ingredients in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's a reason for a young person to really be taking it. You know, mm. cognitive testing is expensive. You know, that's that's one of the most expensive supplements that I take. But it's not going to hurt a young person. But mostly you should take it if you're old like I am and you're worried about you know, you, you want your brain to stay healthy and you want those uh, neurotransmitters to work right and for those uh, connections to not dry up and you lose your memory. So um, look at Cognitex. It's my favorite. All right. Let's keep keep it going here. This is a uh, hormone therapy question. My body is absorbing the bio progesterone and testosterone to get adequate levels the estradiol level is still lacking. Uh, provider does not think separating estradiol out into a separate cream from the progesterone will make a difference. Uh, or cream from the progesterone slash testosterone will make a difference in absorption. But the compounding pharmacist hormone specialist says that sometimes that can help with the absorption of estradiol and also suggested applying that cream at a different time of day than other. And the question is, what's your thoughts? Uh, it seems pellets is, is not an option in this case. Um, yeah. So what's your um, thoughts on this? Yeah, again, I wouldn't take oral estrogens. Um, I do like the pellets a whole lot. So a lot, it's not unusual to, when you use a cream, to be able to get the progesterone and testosterone levels normal and your estrogen levels still low. I had one like that yesterday. Um, you know, when you do use creams, a lot of times if – I'm thinking that you're you're on a pretty good dose of it and it's not showing up on your blood. I'll do a salivary test because it's probably a little more accurate as far as tissue levels of hormones if you are using creams. And sometimes I'll find that they're entirely normal, maybe even on the high side uh, when you do the salivary testing. So that's an option. Um, but I do, and some people have more problems with uh, absorption of the estrogen component rather than the testosterone or even progesterone. Now, progesterone, I will use orally if I need you to sleep, or um, it's the only one that I really use orally. But yeah, it's not a bad idea because estrogen and progesterone compete with each other. So, you know, sometimes you could separate them out. The only problem with that and give them at different times, um, you could definitely do that. Uh, you know, it just adds a little more expense to it, and you know, than using. Uh, the cream in the same base. They usually charge you the same thing if they add them all in as, as to separate them. But, you know, we could certainly try that. 
you know, I, I'm not against that at all. And using it in a, the estrogen in a separate cream and separating by a few hours from your progesterone, especially because they, they do kind of compete with each other a little bit. But the great question. I do see that. I do see that. That is super interesting. That's a, that's a really, I, I love that whole conversation. Uh, so, so thank you for sending that question in. I know that, I know a lot of people are thinking the same thing and you've talked a lot about um, how, how close of a relationship you have with compounders um, and, and how, how they've really been advocates for, um, for hormone therapy and, and um, have yeah. been super helpful for, for all of, yeah. all of our practices. Yeah, really. Um Let's keep going here. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to get a couple Hashimoto's questions. Uh, I'll start with this one. What is good for joint pain from Hashimoto's? Also, what is a good supplement to naturally lower cholesterol? We talked a, a little bit about cholesterol last week um, in terms of, uh, I think, in, in the specific question was around a statin. But um, what's your thoughts on, let's, let's start with the joint pain for Hashimoto's. Yeah, you know, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune inflammatory condition. Um, and you're trying to keep inflammation out of your body. First of all, when, you're, when you have Hashimoto's, you should take zinc and selenium supplements. Plus, you really need a really good diet plan. People with Hashimoto's don't do well with glutens. They should definitely cut glutens and sugar out. A lot of times when they do that, the joint pain gets tremendously better. As far as supplements, I like curcumin. That's my favorite natural anti-inflammatory. Um, I like omega-3s, um, but mostly diet, staying away from glutens and dairy and sugar. Those are the three bad boys. And then if that doesn't work, cut out nightshades. Uh, you may cut out corn, which is not a great product usually. Um, so... And, and follow the levels of, you know, your TPO antibodies. And a lot of times you'll get a good, a good um, clue as to whether or not you're tamping down that inflammatory response. Um, and do all the other stuff, exercise, get a good night's sleep, anything to keep inflammation out of your body, balance your gut, um, you know, all autoimmune diseases and inflammatory changes usually start in the gut. Um, so I hope that helps you. Um, naturally lower cholesterol. My favorite is, um, garlic tablets. Um, and then I like Hawthorne a lot. Yep. That's another one I really like. Um, those are my two favorite natural. And they eat a lot of fiber. And again, don't worry too much about your cholesterol anyway. You know, look at the APOB, look at the, just total cholesterol really means nothing. You have to look at the particle size and the, the amount of oxidized LDL you have, whether your ApoB uh, is high, that's probably the most important thing. So don't just think, hey, I have the cholesterol of 250. I'm, you know, I'm going to have a heart attack. That's not true. Um, Great question there. Um, we're going to stick with kind of Hashimoto's thyroid. What are your thoughts on the use of anatabine to decrease specifically the antibody response in Hashimoto's disease to thyrogobulin and improve the recovery of thyroid function. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, that's a supplement you can use. Uh, you know, again, it's just what I talked about. If you follow the, the, the uh, your antibodies to thyroid, you can kind of follow the way you're kind of tamping down that inflammatory response of Hashimoto's. Uh, the one I usually follow is a TPO antibodies. But anatabine is, is kind of, I think nicotine when you when you think anatabine. It, it's kind of like nicotine. It's one of those alkaloids from uh, the tobacco plant. The one that's that there's many terrible things in the tobacco plant. There's probably there's thousands of different chemicals in there. But the ones that the only ones that are probably good are nicotine and anatabine. Um, they're closely related. Um, but there's a lot of good things from that. You know, we've talked about, um, you know, how we've used nicotine in, um, in people to get their taste and smell back in uh, long COVID patients. It works about 50% of the time, maybe. And how we also use it um, in people with neurodegenerative diseases, specifically uh, 
Parkinson's. Uh, that's the one I like to use it the most on. Nicotine really helps Parkinson's disease uh, because it helps uh, release dopamine uh, from your substantia nigra. Uh, so there's a lot of good things with um, nicotine. I, I'm more familiar. It's a more common product. Nicotine is a natabine. I don't even know where you get that one. But nicotine, you can use it, you know, with patches or gum. Um, and it really kind of has a lot of positive effects. It's very habit forming, but the nicotine in itself is not the bad part of tobacco. It's actually the good part because it really increases cognition. It helps ADD, um, helps, probably helps patients with um, Alzheimer's disease. Um, so I'm not against nicotine in itself at all. I mean, it's actually a favorable substance, even though it gets a bad rap because it's mixed in with all the bad stuff that's in tobacco smoke, um, all the carcinogens and everything. But by itself, it's it's okay. Um, so I assume they kind of work in similar fashion. Um, they're kind of cousins, really. Uh, that's interesting. But that that may be one reason. There's there's even research on, you know prevention of type 1 diabetes in, in some of these uh, uh, substances like anatabine and nicotine. Huh. Uh, so really interesting stuff. There's been a lot of, of mice studies. I don't think I've seen any human studies on that one, but uh, yeah, that's something you may hear more about. Whether super they can isolate that easier than nicotine, I don't know. Super, you know. super interesting. Great, uh, great topic there. Uh, thank you for uh, sending in that question. Um, let's go to uh, sleep positions. You mentioned in the past bad sleep positions uh, today in the podcast that may have caused some of your back issues. Please talk about the better way to sleep. And uh, the, this is in reference to the uh, conversation you had with Ernie around yeah. stretching. And you did talk a lot about how um you, th you think that a lot of your back issues had to do with poor uh, sleep positions. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I really do blame my scoliosis on sleeping on my stomach for the most part and side stomach. Um, I mean, I didn't used to have it. So all, all the years of bad posture in my sleeping um, probably contributed somewhat to that scoliosis. I mean, I've told Ben my back's as crooked as a politician, you know, so, and that can be pretty crooked. Although there's a few good ones. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, the best position, if you can do it is to sleep on your back. Um, a lot of people are mouth breathers and they can't seem to do that very well. Um, so, you know, it's really helped me to, because I get really stiff at night, move around a lot. Um, so I've definitely improved things by putting a pillow between my knees mm. and also um, putting them around me so that I can't turn over. Ah. Um, you know, uh, some people will tape a tennis ball their, to their chest so they can't sleep on their stomach. But I'll, they say only about 15% of people can actually sleep on their back the whole night through. But if you can... I think it's probably a pretty good thing. You might want to elevate the head of your bed a little bit, but um, you know, it's probably a combination of things that's caused my back um, to kind of have some, a lot of scoliosis in it and some degenerative changes. Um, one of them is probably age. I hate to mention it, um, but uh, yeah, read about sleep positions. I'm telling you, you, you have to sleep good. If you want to be healthy, you really need to. And that's one of my goals this year. You got to get the right mattress. Um, yeah. And people yep. are different, you know. Uh, but you know when you've had a good night's sleep. Speaking of age, how old are you as of yesterday? I knew you'd bring that up. <laughs> yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. 60, 68. 68. So I had a big one, so. I guess that's a big one. I, I thought see, 65 was a big one, but, you know, 68. I see, 
Matt's in here wishing you happy birthday. Uh, I, I get to see you tomorrow. So happy, happy belated doc. Thank you. Um, 68, you make that look phenomenal. Uh, you know how they say, you know, 35 is the new 25. I think, I think in your case, 68 is the new 40. Um, yeah, that's a compliment. You look, Thank you. Thank you, you look phenomenal. You look phenomenal. Um, let's keep it moving here, guys. Um, I'm going to, this is, I, I love this topic around antibiotics. Um, especially, you know, hearing you talk about it is really interesting uh, just because you have so much experience in the traditional setting. And, and I know, you know, like you, you are a believer, but also like in moderation. So the question is a friend who is normally very healthy has been on four rounds of antibiotics, z pack Augmentin, Ceftin, and another z pack in the last month for strep and upper respiratory infection slash bronchitis. It uh, goes on to say nothing seems to be helping the cough, exhaustion, and low-grade fever. There's a couple different questions here. When is the best time to take probiotics? Should they be taken along with the antibiotics? And if so, do they need to be taken hours after the antibiotic each day? And then I'll go on or is it better to begin the probiotics after completing a course of antibiotics? Which probiotics would you recommend? I love this because one, I know you had a conversation with pharmacist Chuck Collins, who was uh, on, who is on the team at Digest Shield, uh, helped um, develop Digest Shield, and y'all talked about this, and yeah. it was interesting in that in that video. You know, I think you changed your mind in, in a way. So kind of go well, through what he definitely had a whole different opinion than I did. But um, first of all, um, I mean, you definitely need the probiotics, if you're, especially if you're taking all those antibiotics. But that patient needs a chest X-ray. Mm. I mean, they may have a fungal infection. I mean, there, there may be some other things going on with that patient. And certainly before you hit them with the granddaddy of all the quinolones, you got to be careful about tendon rupture. You know, I talked to a guy this week who had a nightmare of uh, bilateral ruptured Achilles tendons from taking quinolone, Cipro or Leviquin, which should be reserved only for bad cases. They do work, but man, you, you, you take a little bit of a chance with your tendons. This guy ended up getting MRSA and having to have multiple surgeries um, almost lost both his legs because of Barca from uh, after surgery on his ruptured Achilles. I mean, he went through months of agonizing uh, stuff that you couldn't believe. But um, so be very careful. Make sure you have a good reason to use an antibiotic. But, uh, you know, something else may be going on with him or her. So, uh look into it, check blood counts, check chest X-ray and, you know, kind of see what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's various schools of thought on when you should take, whether you should take it or not. Chuck thought that you should hold off on your probiotic until you finish the antibiotic because, you know, you're, um, you're, you're trying to get rid of infection and he said, he thinks you should do it from, stop and just start from the, the get-go after you finish the antibiotics so you can build it back up. I always thought, you know, you should maybe even double your your mm -hmm. probiotics while you're on an antibiotic, but you shouldn't take it. When, the timing, you know, it's pretty important. Um, you know, I really think that you should wait till, you know, take your uh, probiotics um, just separate from whether you take it before or after. I don't think it makes a huge bit of difference, but I like to take them 12 hours apart so that you don't kind of nullify um, the antibiotics destroying the probiotics. Um, so some people say, well, take your probiotics then a couple hours before the antibiotics, which is probably okay. But I like to separate them and just listen to your gut. Yeah. But, um, and again, my favorite, of course, is Digest Shield. Um, sometimes, depending on and so severe gut problems, if you're already into a mess with it, sometimes I use... Uh, Saccharomyces, Boulardi, 100 billion CFUs at a time, and some different ones, maybe even some spore biotics. But um, it just depends on the situation. And a lot of times, by that time, it's time to do a GI map and look at your 
microbiome, but that's a great question. Don't take them together. I think you need them. Um, and there's two schools of thought um, yeah. on whether you should take them while you take your antibiotics or whether you should just allow the antibiotics in there. Um, so I, I'm about 50, 50 on that. I don't, I don't have enough personal experience on myself to kind of tell you which one to do. Um, you know, personally, I kind of keep mine going while I'm on a, if I'm on an antibiotic, I just don't but, take but them separate, But separate yeah. around 12 hours. That's what I do. Yeah. Or at least but if, if it's a, if it's twice a day antibiotic, you need to, of course, you, every 12 hours you're going to take the antibiotic. So separate it by about six hours. Uh, got it. Uh, you know, I, I have in my notes here that um, that we are going to talk more about the quinolones and um, and some of the impact it's having on on tendons because uh, it seems the gist of that is avoid quinolones if you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. I only use them as a last measure. I mean, yeah. Um, all right, let's keep going here. We've got a couple more, then we're going to go live. So uh, we're going to take live questions here in the next couple of minutes. So go ahead and put your question in for Doc. Uh, I see coal miners' daughters in here. Welcome in. Um, let's see, where am I at? Um, okay, this is a Smorlin question. Uh, does Smorlin peptide cause abnormal cells such as cancer? How effective is taking a trochee versus an injection? Um, what's your thoughts on this? Great question. No, Smorlin's not going to cause can <laughs> cancer. The controversy of that comes about because you know, it's supposed to boost your IGF-1 level up. High IGF-1 levels have been associated with, um, you know, more chances of cancer, you know, growth factor, um, you think growth of a cancer. So that's why if you used, really the peptides are just going to stimulate your own body to produce more, which doesn't cause cancer. Now, if you take growth hormone, which is illegal unless you're a, uh, you know, a dwarf, um, then there's some controversy about that. I don't think it's never been shown to cause it. There's never been a proven case of, it, but theoretically, if you had an occult tumor somewhere and you're feeding it growth hormone, it can make it grow faster. Um, perhaps it hasn't been proven, but it's theorized. Um, so don't worry about smorlin causing cancer. Um, uh, but in my experience, it doesn't bump up your IGF-1 level that much anyway. And most everybody I check it on is pretty dang low uh, anyway. Um, trochee versus injection. I think the injection works a lot better. I'm not against a trochee, but um, I, I certainly, from talking to a lot of patients and doing some of the, reading some of the papers on the injection definitely works better. Um and do it at night. Um, what you're trying to do is stimulate your own growth hormone production, which is a repair hormone. And you do it at night on an empty stomach about an hour before you go to bed five nights a week. That's how you mm -hmm. do it. Uh, and if, if you're wanting to kind of do a deeper dive on Samorlin, um, we've done a couple videos. If you search for Samorlin Performance Medicine or Samorlin uh, Robin Riddle, we didn't explain this episode on it. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see a number of different episodes, um, to do a, a little deeper dive. Um, this question I know, um, is, is one we get a ton, right? I think we get this probably daily, um, uh, at least in the office, um, 20 to 30 years ago, women taking hormones during peri slash menopause was said to cause cancer. How are bioidentical hormones different and beneficial? Uh, so this is kind of talking about, uh, you know, I'm sure study uh, the Women's Health Initiative, which you've talked at length about. Um, so I, I, I'm going to just position this question as taking hormones during perimenopause or menopause and, and kind of talk to us how, um, how that does not cause cancer or whatever your thoughts are on it. Yeah. Well, bioidentical hormones are different because they come from plants that are identical to what you put out before. They do not cause cancer. They prevent cancer. The controversy came after the WHI study using the two most commonly prescribed drugs in America at that time, Primrin and Primpro. Uh, the estrogen components from pregnant horse urine in that, 
And the Prim Pro, which was actually the culprit in that study, um, is a synthetic um, methyl, methylated um, different kind of progesterone. It's not a bioidentical hormone. It's one that you find in birth control pills and Depo Provera. Um, you know, it's it's totally different uh, structure than uh, bioidentical progesterone. And anyway, in that study, it's interesting because number one, and I go over this many times, and number one, the average woman in that study was 17 years postmenopausal. Half of them were obese, half of them were smokers, which is what causes cancer. And it's interesting that in the, um, the primarin only study, even using pregnant horse urine estrogens, taking that versus women that took nothing, there was actually less breast cancer. That was protective against breast cancer in women. So it wasn't the primarin, it was the prim pro, the, the, um, medroxy progesterone, which we never use anyway. We don't use it. Um, so, and even with that one, when they added that, the incidence of breast cancer went from four women per thousand taking nothing to five women per thousand taking the Prim Pro. And they said that's a 25% increase in breast cancer. So it kind of, everybody goes, I can't take, you know, it causes breast cancer. So, these bioidentical hormones do not cause breast cancer. If anything, they prevent it. I wouldn't give any woman who had an active breast cancer hormones, you know, but it's just very controversial, terrible, terrible study. And it was really more of a cardiovascular study anyway. It wasn't even a hormonal study, but it, it really denied a whole generation of women beneficial hormones. And most doctors don't know about bioidentical hormones because big pharmaceuticals can't make them. They're not taught that. You have to get them through a compounding pharmacy. You know, you, you, most doctors don't know anything about them. Most pharmacists don't either. You have to study them and use them. But, um, you know, you, your life will be better with bioidentical hormones in most every case I've seen. Um, I hope I that's a good explanation. No, I, I really appreciate that question. And, and, and I think, you know, because, you know, we believe that it, it really did hurt an entire generation of women that study did, you know, I feel like part of our responsibility is to uh, talk about this as much as possible. And so we appreciate all those questions, any questions surrounding that, uh, the safety of bioidentical hormones. Uh, we really love having that conversation, uh, anything that can reduce the fear around it. Um, that was I, had, I had a lady today, one of my last patients, um, very healthy, 66-year-old lady, uh, wants to do everything to stay healthy, feel great. And, you know, she's done great with her nutrition and vitamins and her cleaving looks good. Her, her hormones are rock bottom because she's 66 years old and she wants my advice on how to age well. And I, have you thought about hormones, you know? And, um, you know, she, I, she says, no, I can't because my aunt had breast cancer, you know? So there's a total lack of knowledge on, on hormone therapy yeah. in women and really men too, but it's, it's kind of denying yourself a lot better chance at not getting dementia, protecting your bones, protecting your heart. But, um, you know, uh, anyway, sad, well, it, really. It's a, it's really important that we talk about it. So, so thank you. Thank you for bringing that up and thank you for, uh, that answer there, doc. We're going to, we're going to hop into the live portion of our show. I see, uh, Thelma on YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being here uh, tonight. And I, I see you've got a question as well. We're going to get to that here shortly. Um, we really, you guys make this show cool. So, uh, so thank you for contributing and asking these thoughtful questions. Um, and we're going to jump into it right now. Uh, let's see where, where's my question. I know I had, uh, uh, let's get to Rhonda here. Rhonda on Facebook. I want to make a lifestyle change with my diet to maintain weight for me and my husband with possibly doing intermittent fasting. 
uh, skipping breakfast with all the different diet plans. Okay, so all the different diet, keto, carnivore, vegetarian, et cetera, and different thoughts with blood type, et cetera. What would you recommend for a base diet to build up? Off of. Thank you for your show. Thank you for being here, Rhonda. Um, the way I'm interpreting this is they're wanting to build in intermittent fasting as a, uh, I guess, a uh, cadence for eating. Um, when they eat, how are you suggesting they eat if they are doing intermittent fasting? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of studies have proven that the timing of the eating may be as important as what you're eating. So I like intermittent fasting. You know, um, start out with a 16 off, eight on. Um, personally, most most days I just don't eat after 7 p.m. till noon the next day, except for black coffee and water. I don't get hungry. When you eat breakfast, you get hungry in an hour or two, especially if you eat carbs for breakfast. So <laughs> it's more of a lifestyle. It's a way of living. Really, all diets work, all diets fail uh, because it's hard to stay on them. Uh, but anyway, my advice is get on a low carb diet. Uh, I, I just, it needs to be low carb for most people, not everybody, but for greater than 90% of people, you know, it's all, it's about the carbohydrates. And so you don't have to go keto. That's hard to stick to. I like carnivore, especially if you're having gut problems, a vegetarian, I'm not that hip on, um, you know, you have to have a lot of supplementation if you're a vegetarian and um, but you have to eat a lot more too, because the protein's not as absorbable as, as animal protein, um, blood type diets. I'm not sure what to tell you about that. I'm not sure I've had people think it works. I don't know why, but, um, but anyway, so low carb intermittent fasting to start out with. And, you know, also you may want to look at you know, your, your blood work to see what your metabolism and your hormones look like. And, you may need some help. I had a guy today, one of my afternoon patients, he was at 99 and a half pound weight loss. He looks fantastic. Um, and he needed a little help. We use Monjero on him. He mm. loved it. It really worked really well. Um, 99 pounds. And that's about, it's taken him about six months, but you know, very it's, happy. It's, it's unbelievable. This is, uh, we actually put this in the weekly today. Um, with the, the episode we did on, uh, on Ozempic with Brandy Collins was just phenomenal. You talked with her as well in the common sense. Uh, I believe she's at 120, uh, yeah. lost 120 pounds, mm -hmm. um, over the course, uh, over a longer course, about a year and a half or so. Um, but this was in the weekly. We did, we did, a uh, an episode with her about, uh, seven months ago. Um, but she used Ozempic, which, you know, is very similar to, uh, Mongero. Yeah, I think I'm going to get him on one of, one of my podcasts because he's got a great story to tell. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, um, but, all right, let's get to another question here. Um, where am I at? Where am I at? Don and Steve, um, my husband is having some memory loss. He has had five surgeries this past year with anesthesia. One surgery was five hours and, a th and another one was three and a half hours. The other three wasn't quite that long. He also has chromium and cobalt, cobalt in his system from a failed hip replacement. What are the best supplements or treatments Dr. Rogers would suggest? Yeah, there's no doubt anesthesia can affect your memory a little bit. Um, but hopefully temporarily, um, you know, I think a lot of times it depends on how close together the surgeries had to be. Um, again, uh, look at everything first. Do a, do a, get a Cleveland panel, look at all the hormones, look at metabolism, look at gut function, uh, look at sleep patterns, look at medicines you may be on. Um, it needs an evaluation for one thing. Um, I always check for an APOB genotype. Uh, to see if you're predisposed to dementia. Um, I like Cognitex. You know, it's a, it's a no-brainer to start taking that. Um, and, you know, some other things you could do as well, like nicotine, like I just talked about. Um, but I don't know about the chromium, you know, from the hip stuff, the artificial joints, I guess. Um, I like the infrared sauna. Um 
I like milk thistle. Um, I like drinking a lot of water. Um, I like EDTA, which is a, you can take it orally. I do. Uh, it's a chelator. Um, so it may bind up some of the, some of the metals that may be floating around a little bit. Uh, stay active. I mean, one reason he may have had problems is because he may not have been as active. I think exercise is the number one thing you can do for your health, especially your mental health. Yeah. Um, so those are a few of the suggestions I would have. Um, and, you know, he probably needs an evaluation to see, see how bad it is. I don't know if he's had previous concussions. You know, that's always a factor. Um, some medications can increase your risk of it, like statin drugs have been known for that. Um, so interesting. It's a, a great question. Um, ho hope everything's okay with your husband. Um, and we'll, we'll probably talk more and more about stuff like that. So, uh, hope that helps. Um, let's get to, to Wilma here on, uh, YouTube. Best time of day to take methylene blue. Can you take in differently? We've talked a, a little bit about methylene blue. You've done an episode on this. Um, yeah. what time of day are you recommending people, um, use this? Usually in the morning. Um, let's tell them, it gives you energy, helps you breathe. Um, if for some reason that most of your shortness of breath is at night, you could try it, you know, after supper, but you just put eight drops in a glass of water and drink it once a day. Mm. Put somebody on today for long hauler syndrome. Mm. Um, uh, good question. Great question. All right. Thank you for that, Wilma. Uh, Bianca's asking, what is the cellulose, silica, and acacia gum that is in the life extension saffron? You know anything about this? They're just fillers. Okay. Yeah, they're just fillers. Um, is that something to be concerned about? Not really. There's so little bit of it. I mean, but most of them have that. I don't, you know, I have to look at, um, you should flip. I don't think ours has that in it, the one that we have formulated, though. That's one reason um, I decided to make some of my own vitamins to get some of the fillers out. Um, you have to get something to stick to. Let's see. You know, see, mine does have a little cellulose. Um, oh, I see it. Uh, in, micro, in, yeah, uh, micro yeah. cellulose vegetable capsule. Yeah. See, I, I made sure they didn't put any artificial flavors or or any of that. Um, you know, because sometimes even Life Extension has started putting a little, I think, dextrose in some of there. So um, that's a good point, though. Bianca, you know, you, you have to be careful. It's going to be a really small amount, but it's still there. Yeah. Um, the cellulose, you don't worry about. Well, I think cellulose, I think, you know, just fiber. Yeah. Um, dissolvable right. fiber. Thank you for that, Bianca. Let's get to Ruth here. I was having my mom take a supplement for cholesterol, but it makes her burp. These are the ingredients, vitamin E, pine fisterols, trunk extract, beta glucans, grape seed extract, CoQ10, garlic root powder, turmeric rhizomes extract. What could be causing this? Um, what's your thoughts could, on this? It could be the turmeric uh, or the garlic powder. Um, you know, they, they can cause some of that. You think there's no fish oil in there, but fish oil is famous for that too. Um, one thing you may want to do to try on that's, you know, if you've already bought it and I'll just put it in the freezer and take it directly from the freezer and it may not cause those burps. Put, put all not, of this in there in the freezer. Well, uh, that's a supplement that has everything oh. in there as the way I'm taking it. Okay. Um, Got it. That's what, that's what I, okay. These are the ingredients. Okay. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me, but just put it in the freezer and take it from there. Uh, but there's several things in there that could definitely cause a little burping, you know, Everybody talks about fish oil giving you fish burps, which they definitely can. In that case, make sure you got to have a good quality one and, and still does it. Put it in the freezer and take it directly from the freezer. Mm. Thank you for that question, Ruth. I'm going to put this up from Katie. Uh, Ernie also recommends taping tennis balls to your chest and sides. Uh, this is in regards to improving uh, your sleep position. Uh, thank you, Katie, for putting that in there. 
Um, let's get to. See. I used to hang a tennis ball from Ben's crib, you know, right in front of him. That's how he became a great tennis player. He became an all American at UT and then professional tennis player. I, was, I credit myself for doing that, for putting that ball in your crib and, and then sawing you off a racket when you're about not even two years old and you used it, you know, in the back. You know, um, I watched uh, King Richard the other night and I thought he, I was like, dad was King Richard before King Richard was King Richard. You know, yeah, putting the tennis right. ball. That's right. Putting the it tennis was. ball in the crib. <laughs> I remember. It's I remember a, going a, to a tournament with you one time, and Venus Williams was a teenager. She was older than you, but um, everybody was going nuts over Venus. And one of the um, the folks that knew the family really well, uh, I asked about Venus, and he goes, "Wait till you see." Her little sister <laughs> trying to be Serena. I tell you, that, that oh, here's story. Your here, here's your that story is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really like that movie. By the way, it, it really. It's just crazy. It's crazy. I just, I just, it's a great movie. Very true. I just wish Will Smith hadn't have punched Chris Rock out at the Academy Awards for it. It kind of ruined it for me. I, <laughs> All right, let's get to Thelma's question here. Can the doctor We're getting suggest? Off track. We're getting off track. Can the doctor suggest a diet that would help someone with lung cancer? Yeah, keto. Mm. Um, I'd always, I've always said, if I had any form of cancer, I, there's two things I would do: start a ketogenic diet, and um, also um, start taking IV vitamin C infusions. But uh, Cancers love sugar and they love iron. Mm. I'd make sure my iron wasn't overcooked, you know, um, had too much iron in it. But um, those are two things in addition to what else you may be getting traditionally you can think about. And there's some other things that are really outside the box. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to do a, another podcast with uh, Dan Bolton this week about follow up of his cancer. Um, ordeal where he kind of um, sought out some um, outside the box complementary cures and it worked. Yeah. Um, so Unbelievable. Be Unbelievable for that story. one. I'll, I'll try to get that out soon. Um, all right, Thelma, thank you so much for that question. Uh, let's get to Allison here on Facebook. I was told early December that I had double ear infections and was given amoxicillin. I've tried my best to heal it by waiting and hoping it would heal on its own without having to take the antibiotic. And I've not taken it yet, but I do feel it has gotten better. I was told by urgent care that ear drops would not help because it's inner ear. Do you suggest other ways to try and heal them? Or do you recommend to go ahead and take the antibiotic? I'm kind of reading this as if um, Allison has not taken the antibiotic yet. Yeah. So uh, what's your thoughts on this? I'd take the antibiotic. Um, I just would because you don't want to, that could lead to a chronic. It's not an inner ear infection. It's a middle ear infection. Um, the drops only help uh, if it's an outer ear in the ear canal. They're not mm -hmm. going to penetrate the into the middle ear. It's not the inner ear. It's the middle ear. And if there's fluid back there and infection, because I mean the other option is getting it drained, and you don't want to get your, you know, uh, TM incised. You know, so I would personally, there's times to take antibiotics, you know, um, and, and if it's going to dam possibly damage your hearing or lead to a chronic infection, uh, scar your eardrums and all, I would take the antibiotic. Um, I think cool. I, I want to, Allison, Allison, am I reading that right? Uh, um, it is true you have not taken the, the antibiotic, is that right? Just want to make sure we're answering that uh, correctly. Um, okay, cool. I think we're I think we're good there. Thank you, Allison, for putting that in. Um, all right, advice can be good. Just don't overdo them. I mean, don't take them yeah. for every little thing and be discriminatory. Um, you get you on a muscle. I mean, you know, you, if you get a worse infection, there's plenty of other antibiotics that you're not going to get tolerant to that. To that one, it won't make a difference. All right. Um, thank you for, for that question there. Let's go to Tanya. Um, I've been diagnosed as having reactive hypoglycemia. I had gastric bypass surgery in 2007. 
Can intermittent fasting help? Do I need to do it every day or can I do it three to four times a week? I am 54 years old. It may help, but it may make it worse. You know, you have reactive hypoglycemia. That means when you eat, your sugars uh, drop because you have an overstimulation of insulin, uh, which leads to insulin resistance and then diabetes. So, um, I, you know, you've got a stomach bypass surgery, so you have a very small pouch for stomach. So that that's a little different there. You, you know, you may have to eat a little different pattern. You may have to eat a little more frequently. You just make sure you eat. Um, you don't eat a lot of high glycemic foods like sugar. And, you know, make sure you, you eat protein and good fats and learn what you can eat. You know, what I would do is put on a freestyle Libre and just experiment and see what for two weeks you can get it for free uh, with insurance and um, see what causes your sugar to go up and down and then avoid that. Um, that's a great question. And really, sometimes gastric surgery puts a wrench into it a little bit. So you may be a little different than somebody with a normal size stomach. Mm. Um, but great question. Everybody's different. Get a freestyle Libre and see what makes it better, what makes it worse. You know, you can even try intermittent fasting, but it may make it worse. Thank you for that, Tanya. Great question there. I'm going to put this uh, comment up from Coal Miner's daughter. Uh, my father-in-law had the focused U.S. at UVA Charlottesville for his terrible dominant hand tremors, and it worked exactly as they said, can hold a fork and pen to write again. That's phenomenal. That's um, awesome. Yeah. I'm assuming this is, this is a Parkinson's uh, scenario, I'm, I'm assuming here. So uh, thank you for putting that uh, in there, Coal Miner's daughter. That's awesome news. That's awesome. Yeah, they're going to be able to do some cool stuff. They already are, you know, with uh, – deep ultrasound and all kinds of good, cool stuff out there. Uh, Brandon on YouTube, high iron and iron saturation, but normal binding capacity, ferritin and transferrin. Could this be due to long-term zinc use without copper, frequent cast iron skillet use? That's interesting. Could be, you know, I'd definitely check my copper and zinc and vitamin A levels. Sometimes, you know, it's just controversial too about whether the high iron or the, um, and saturation is more important than the ferritin. Ferritin is more of a storage form, um, so it's really interesting. Um, you know, I like to see what your hemoglobin hematocrit are, and you know, um, you may even want to donate some blood. Um, you, know, you know, hemochromatosis can be genetically inherited but uh frequent iron skillet use certainly should cut that out um, so and check your vitamin levels yeah um very good comment uh brandon thank you for putting that in there I, that is a i've heard a lot about the the cast iron thing um so thank you mm -hmm. for putting that in there brandon um stan is asking do you have to do you have to have surgery to correct a deviated septum you don't have to have surgery, but to correct it, you'd have to have surgery. Um, I have, I've had it done. Uh, I broke my nose three times playing sports in, in high school. And the last time I just couldn't breathe out of one side of my nose. So my dad, who was a doctor, uh, got one of his colleagues to correct it. And I'm glad I did it. Um, so yes, yeah, it wasn't a lot of fun getting it. I remember it wasn't a lot of fun, but um, if you can't breathe out of one, you know, I, I'm a big, breathe, I'm, I'm big on nose breathing, not mouth breathing. So if it's, especially with exercise, it just helps you so much. Go to Zach's, uh, yeah. some of the things that Zach Kramer's podcast with us on nose breathing and breathing in general. So, um, and they have better ways of doing it now that are way easier than when I had it done 40 some years ago. Um, but, uh, I don't know of any other way that, you know, you could try putting a breathe right strip on there or some of these nasal insertions to help you breathe at night if you're a total mouth breather. But yeah, if it's severe, that's the only way I know is to go in there and straighten it out. Great question. Great question there, Stan. Let's I've get had to it done. 
to Mark's question here, uh, one in 4,200 American men age 50 plus may have vexus. Um, vexus syndrome, which are tied to low blood oxygen rheumatoid arthritis lupus. Do you think COVID-19 is why vexus syndrome is more common? What's your thoughts on this? I have no idea. I, I don't know. That's don't super know. interesting. Yeah, I have to look. I don't know. I really, I don't know. I'd, have, I'd be afraid to give you my opinion on that because I'm not knowledgeable about it. Um. We'll do a, a, a little little research there for you, Mark. Uh, thank you for kind of uh, putting that in there and getting our uh, wheels turning. Um, let's get to Roel. Um, Roel is saying, Dr. Ross, can I ask which saffron do you recommend from Life Extension and how many milligrams? Um, and I think, what is it? Is it just called saffron with Life Extension? Yeah. I didn't know they had that many different types. Maybe if Katie's on here, she can pull it up and see the different types. One of them may be more of an extended release. Um, I'm not even sure on the milligrams of that. I have to. I don't have them sitting right here with me. I know I probably have one upstairs somewhere, a saffron tablet. Katie is on it. Yeah, she's already so quick. On it tonight. 80, 88 milligram. But is there any other type that they – Sell from Life Extension. Uh, it seems I, I'm I, I'm sure that this is the one we have in office. Katie, is is there other options as well for saffron, or is it just optimized saffron? You know, we have ours in our stress formula combined with ashwagandha. So Katie's just saying there's thinning. one. Katie, yeah. so she's saying there's just one, and and um, and uh, let us know. I there, know, I didn't know Life Extension made more than one. Um, I haven't seen it if they do. Super um, interesting. Roel, hope this hope this helps, man. Seems optimized saffron, 88.75 milligrams uh, is the one from Life Extension. And um, okay, seems Karen here is confirming uh, 88.25. So we're, we're, we're close there, 88.25.75. Uh, oh, okay. Coal miners are saying uh, not Parkinson's, just essential tremors. Okay, I was wondering, you, you kind of assumed that was Parkinson's. But, yeah, yeah, um, that's that's my fault. Um, yeah. I did assume. Uh, so with that was just essential trum, uh, tremors. Thank you for that coal miner's daughter. Um, let's see. Uh, Katie saying if whoever wants the saffron, they want to email her. Um, Katie at performancemedicine.net. She'll send you a, a direct link uh, to the one we've been recommending. Uh, so go ahead and give Katie a, an email there if you're wanting to 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 get the a direct access to um, the saffron we've been talking about. Um, all right, it seems Dr. Ike is here. That's usually our curtain. Is that the cue? Yeah, you won't believe this, but this is pretty cool. But he got a haircut today. Look at I won't check him out. You don't even recognize him. What? You recognize him? Being, look at this. Look at that. No, I don't. You look so yeah. much smaller. I oh, know. <laughs> like. Is that a different? Is that a different Ike? Yeah, it's the same Ike, but he really looks a lot trimmer. Oh my goodness, Ike, are are you are you camera shy with the new haircut? Well, he <laughs> yeah, he does around the face. That that changes yeah. his look completely. I know, I know it does. That's cool. Anyway, That's he's all happy. Um, all right, guys, that was Doctor Ike. He usually. Um, ends the show for us uh that's gonna we're gonna call it there um doc man thanks for the time tonight hey thanks ben it's enjoyable i hope you have a great week and i hope everybody has a great week and stays healthy and uh to, to end the show here you're getting so many happy belated uh oh, thank you thank goodness you. look at all these uh everyone's thinking of of 68 here uh i'm gonna celebrate with you, you uh uh, tomorrow. Uh, so happy belated doc. Thank you for uh, taking you, the time uh, to hang out with us tonight. Oh, it's fun. Thank um, you. To the people here live with us. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you for the thoughtful and wonderful questions uh, that you guys always bring every single Tuesday. Um, we will be back. We do this every single Tuesday at seven o'clock to answer your health and wellness qu questions. Uh, we're getting a lot of a lot of uh, happy birthdays. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Becky in here. Deborah. 
goodness. Thank you guys. That's awesome. That's so sweet. Um, Doc, I love you, man. Love you too, Ben. We're going to call it a show. I love you guys. Katie, thank you so much for being in the comments and behind the scenes. Carter, I see you. Tabitha, I see you. Jenny, behind the camera, thank you for uh, for grabbing the racket and, and doing everything that you do to get our show ready to go uh, every single Tuesday. Uh, we love you guys. I am out. Um, I'm going to go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my outro? Ike, Ike, give me my outro, Ike. Come on, man. All right, All right. see you guys. Love you. Don't go away.